the on the morrow. My father's and sis my father and sisters were waiting for us on the porch. Mama told them the sad story. My sisters broke down and started crying. They ran to Mama and buried their faces in her long cotton dress. Papa came over and laid his hand on my shoulder. Billy, he said, there are times in a boy's life when he has to stand up like a man. This is one of those times. I know what you're going through and how it hurts, but there's always an answer. The good Lord has a reason for everything he does. There couldn't be any reason for my dogs to die, Papa, I said. They just couldn't. They hadn't done anything wrong. Papa glanced at Mama. Getting no help from her, he said. It's getting cold out here. Let's go into the house. I have something to show you. Guess what we're having for dinner, Mama said, as we turned to enter the house. Your favorite, Billy, sweet potato pie. You like that, don't you? Won't you? I nodded my head, but my heart wasn't in it. Papa didn't and follow us into the kitchen. He turned and entered his room. When he came into the room, he had a small shoe box in his hand. I recognized the box by the bright, bright blue ribbon tied around it. Mama kept her valuables in it. A silence settled over the room. Walking to the head of the table, Papa set the box down and started untying the ribbon. His hands were trembling as he fumbled with the, fumbled with the knot. With the lid off, he reached in and started lifting out bundles of money. After stacking them in a neat pile, he raised his head and looked at me, straight at me. Billy, he said, You know how your mother has prayed that someday we'd have enough money to move out of these hills and into town so that you children could get an education? I nodded my head. Well, he said in a low voice, because of your dogs, her prayers have been answered. This is the money earned by old Dan and little Anne. I've managed to make the farm feed us and clothe us, and I've saved every cent your furs brought in. We now have enough. Isn't it wonderful, Mama said. It's just like a miracle. I think it is a miracle, Papa said. Remember Bill Billy said a prayer when he asked for his pups, and then and there were our prayers. Billy got his pups. Though those don't... Through those dogs, your prayers were answered. Yes, I'm sure it is a miracle. If he gave them to me, why did why did he take them away? I said, asked. I think there's an answer for that too, Papa said. You see, Billy, your mother and I had decided not to separate you from your dogs. We knew how much you loved them. We decided that when we moved to town, we'd leave you here with your grandpa for a while. He needs help anyway. But I guess the good Lord didn't want that to happen. He doesn't like to see family split up. That's why they were taken away. I knew my father was a firm believer in fate. To him, everything that happened was the will of God, and in his Bible he could always find the answers. Papa could see that this talk had, had very little effect on me. With a sorrowful look on his face, he sat down and said, now let's give thanks for the food and all the wonderful things God has done for us. I'll say a special prayer and ask him to help Billy. I barely heard what Papa had to say. During the meal, I could tell no one was enjoy that no one was enjoying the food. As soon as it was over, I went to my room and lay down on the bed. Mama came in. Why don't you go to bed, she said, and get a good night's sleep. You'll feel better tomorrow. No, I won't, Mama, I said. I'll have to bury little Anne tomorrow. I know, she said as she turned my covers down. I'll help if you want me to. No, Mama, I said. I don't want anyone to help. I'd rather do it all by myself. Billy, you're always doing things for yourself, Mama said. That's not right. Everyone needs some help in this life. It's true. I know, Mama, I said, but please, not this time. Ever since my dogs were puppies, we've always been together. Just us three. We hunted together, we played together, we even went swimming together. Did you know, Mama, that little Anne used to come every night and peek in my window just to see if I was all right? I guess that's why I want to be by myself when I bury her. Now say your prayers and go to sleep. I'm sure you'll feel better in the morning. I didn't feel like saying any prayers that night. I was hurting too much. Long after the rest of my family had gone to bed, I was 
lay staring into the darkness, trying to think and not able to. Sometime in the night I got up, tiptoed to my window and looked out at my doghouse. It looked so lonely and empty sitting there in the moonlight. I could see that the door was slightly ajar. That means open. I thought of the many times I had lain in my bed and listened to the squeaking of the door as my dogs went in and out. I didn't know I was crying until I felt the tears roll down my cheeks. Mama must have heard me get up. She came in and put her arms around me. Billy, she said in a quavering voice, you'll just have to stop this. You're going to make yourself sick, and I don't think I can stand any more of it. I can't, Mama, I said. It hurts too so much. I just can't. I don't want you to feel bad just because I do. I can't help it, Billy, she said. Come now and get back into bed. I'm afraid you'll catch a cold. After she had tucked me in, she sat on the bed for a while. As if she were talking to the darkness, I heard her say, If only there was some way I could help. Something I could do. No one can help, Mom, I said. No one can bring my dogs back. I know, she said as she got up to leave the room. But there must be something. There just has to be. After Mom had left the room, I buried my face in my pillow and cried myself to sleep. The next morning, I made another box. It was smaller than the first one. Each nail I drove in the rough pine boards caused the knot in my throat to get bigger and bigger. My sisters came to help. They stood in for a while, then with tears streaming, they ran for the house. I buried little Anne by the side of old Dan. I knew that was where she wanted to be. I also buried a part of my life along with my dog. Remembering a sandstone ledge that I had been... I had seen while prowling the woods, I went there. I picked out a nice stone and carried it back to the graves. There, with painstaking care, I carved their names deep in its red surface. As I stood out at the two graves, I tried to understand some of the things my father had told me, but I couldn't. I was still hurting and still felt, had every, and still had that empty feeling. I went to Mama and had a talk with her. Mama, I asked. Do you think God made a heaven for all good dogs? Yes, yeah, she said. I'm sure he did. Do you think he made a place for dogs to hunt? You know, just like we have here on our place with mountains and sycamore trees, rivers and cornfields and old rail fences. Do you think he did? From what I've read in the good book, Billy, she said, he put far more things up there than we have here. Yes, I'm sure he did. I was thinking this over when Mama came up to me and started tucking my shirt in. You feel better now? She asked. It still hurts, Mama, I said as I buried my face in her dress, but I do feel a little better. I'm glad, she said as she patted my head. I don't like to see my little boy hurt like this. To be continued.